This episode is sponsored by Microfocus and the LoadRunner Solutions family. That includes LoadRunner Professional, Enterprise, Cloud, and Developer. You know, performance matters. Did you know that LoadRunner Solutions have the largest community of practitioners in the world? Join that community at community.microfocus.com, scan the QR code, and check out the LoadRunner family page on performance engineering, as well as their YouTube playlist that we've got links for in the show notes on smcjournal.com as well as YouTube. Hello, everybody. This is the SMC Journal podcast, the show that's all about software engineering in today's IT, and that includes performance, DevOps, security, optimization, observability, and much, much more. I'm Scott Moore, your host. Thanks for being with me. I've known Lee Barnes for more than 20 years, and he's been um, around in, in all of my circles in the testing and QA world. And every time I hear him talk about something, uh, and he's been talking about continuous performance recently, I learn a lot. And I just look wise because I steal from wise people, right? So if, if I hear anything from me that's worth hearing, it's probably stolen from somebody like Lee. I wanted to have him on the show because the term, uh, the topic, continuous performance, continues to pop up everywhere that I go, and people want to talk about it. And a lot of people want it, but it's kind of like a dog chasing a car. Once they stop, the car stops, they don't really know if they want it or not. So I wanted to kind of ask Lee, because he's been through this. He's actually talked about this recently and some of the lessons that he's learned from actually doing this felt like it'd be valuable to share with you today. So let's bring Lee Barnes on the broadcast today. Hey, Lee, welcome to the SMC Journal podcast. It's so good to have you on the show today. Oh, thanks, Scott. It's great to be here. Long overdue. Yeah. Yeah, I've wanted to have you on the show since, since the beginning, and I know that we've known each other and worked in this industry alongside each other for decades now, and probably yeah. a lot of my audience already knows who you are, but for the two or three people who don't, why don't you introduce yourself to them and, and what you do? Sure, sure. So, uh, Lee Barnes, I'm currently Chief Quality Officer at Forte Group. Uh, if anyone does know me, probably knows me from my days at Utopia Solutions. We merged with Forte Group about 18 months ago. Um, after working together for many, many years. Um, I've been in this industry for uh, 30 plus years now. Um, got my got my start in performance engineering by accident, uh, working with uh, Mercury Interactive, who I'm sure a lot of us all know and love, and um, doing a lot of functional test automation work with those tools. And then they handed me LoadRunner and said, hey, figure this out. We've got, we need you to implement it for a client next week. Um, and, uh, you know, I was probably technical enough to get things to work, but the engineering background in me wanted to know why response times were high or low or why certain things were happening. So, um, you know, I got, I was very naive at the beginning and just kind of natural curiosity got me into, Hey, this is, this is more than just surface level, you know, putting a load on something and, and looking at the, uh, the symptomatic metrics. So that's how I got my start. And. And, uh, you know, it's been a fun ride ever since. So I'm so glad that you've been there for the same ride that I have because you've seen a lot of stuff and we both watched how software is implemented and how it's changed over the decades where uh, we went from standard waterfall to agile to now DevOps and other and even other stuff that it's it seems to be changing faster but the one thing that keeps popping up as a um, as a new standard is continuous everything. Everything needs to be continuous, and that includes testing and all kinds of testing. And so yeah. I know that you presented recently at a conference in FlectorCon, and you actually shared this with me. And I saw that. I was like, wow, you've got some really good points here. And I thought we should talk a little bit about that because you're talking about continuous performance and I really feel like everywhere I'm going, people are asking me about that. They're saying, I want to do that. I want to put things in a pipeline, not just my functional test, but my performance test as well. But man, it seems pretty hard. It seems easy to say that you want it, but it seems hard to do. And has that been your experience as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, it started off as as, hey, how, how do we get this traditional end of cycle Big Bang performance test that we've been doing, you know, you and I for years and years and years, how do we get the results out earlier, right? We all love the success, right? When we run the test and, and the results are glowing, but what if you're just before release and you find issues, right? And and you've 
at the end of this long release cycle and the first evaluation of performance is right before release that it comes down to you don't have very good options then. So um, it, it, it is hard. And uh, you know, it's not uh, as we found out the hard way, what seemed at the time as the logical way to approach it was, was absolutely the wrong way to approach it. So one of the, your first slides uh, looks exactly like the uh, performance tour first slide. You say performance testing is dead. I say QA is dead. I even went to mid journey and said, give me your vision of the last software developer on earth. And it drew a picture for me. And I put that as my slide, but then I have to qualify that by saying QA as we know it is dead. So what I'm trying to say is we have all been saying for years, you can't test quality. You can't test performance into software. You have to engineer it in from the beginning. And that whole shift left effort was part of the, trying to do that. But I think sometimes we try to go for the low hanging fruit. People try to do it as fast as they can just to say, okay, we're doing this. And they kind of missed it. And what are some things that you're seeing in companies where, yeah, they, oh yeah, we're, we're continuous performance. Yeah. And they're really not. What are the things, the signs that tell you they're not? Well, if they're, if they're just trying to do that traditional big bang performance test at the end of every sprint or the end of every couple sprints, um, they're still not learning what they could as early in the in the delivery cycle, right? We, we want to try to find as close to the commit that caused the issue uh, as we can. And if you're waiting till that commit becomes part of this big system, you know, two, three, four sprints later, um, it's you've, you've lost a lot of opportunity for sure. Why do you think functional testing came first as part of the, the pipeline? Why is it harder to implement performance test earlier? Well, I think part of it is just maybe Conway's law and the way organizations are are structured, right? The performance test group was always a separate team. Um, you, know, you and I probably, how many performance testing center of excellences did we stand up in our career that were just these ivory tower, uh, we'll get the application at the end of the release cycle and we'll throw the results back over the wall. Um, kind of making fun of it now, but we were we were pretty proud of that back in the day. Um, but it was always someone else's problem, right? They're, the delivery teams weren't doing performance testing ever. They were probably doing some form of functional testing, uh, but they weren't ever doing performance testing. So it was just always someone else's problem. Yeah, I, and I I still say if a COE is is implemented correctly and it's, the company is u implementing software that way, it, it does work well. The problem I always ran into is you can't scale that because when you get into the large enterprises, there's so much testing that needs to be done you can't have enough performance engineers who have that niche skill set to, to get the good results. Then you end up pulling in people who just can spell performance and then you start getting really bad results because of that. Yeah. So we, we kind of think, uh, okay, shifting left means make the developers do everything. And that's not true either. Right. I mean, so how do you scale yeah. that? Yeah. Um, another important lesson learned when we first got started with this, um, we took the engineers from the center of excellence and we, we started to seed them into uh, some delivery teams um, to establish this practice. We didn't really know what it, what it was going to be yet, but we knew we wanted to implement performance testing early. Um, and one of the things we found was the delivery teams, developers, developers especially, they weren't ready to, to um, understand the data, much less act upon it, right? We were... Yeah, we were executing tests. They were probably the wrong tests, certainly early on, and just throwing the data uh, at the teams, and they had no idea um, what they were looking at. So we really had to back that off, um, do more of it ourselves, and um, when we found an issue, walk them through the process. Of, okay, this is a symptom. This is not a root cause. Let's let's correlate this with something that's closer to the symptom, and then uh, and then start to dig in there. And and actually, once they saw that process. Um, it went from us kind of pushing the uh, the whole thing on them to them starting to pull. I said, okay, well, I, I understand that. What what else can you show me? And uh, that's when we started actually getting getting momentum. Uh, uh, there was a whole bunch of other lessons learned that we had in terms of what types of tests we should execute. And um, uh, but but certainly, you know, start small, get get a single team. Uh, up and running, and then they they become kind of the the seed. Uh, if you will, to, to start expand to, to other teams. I want to bring up one of the slides from your presentation that you did that I, I noticed. You've got 
going into a DevOps culture, but trying to use traditional performance testing and some of the, the walls that you run into. Can you talk to this slide just a little bit? Sure, sure. So this came out of our, you know, our early attempt to, hey, we, we've got this end of release performance test center of excellence that, that are executing these large uh, system level performance tests. Well, we want to move it now into you know, more iterative development uh, cycle. So the logical approach that we took was, well, let's just try to do that at the end of every delivery sprint or the end of every couple uh, delivery sprints. But you know, we still had those rigid rules around, um, well, if you don't freeze your code, right, we've, we may have to re-script. Re um, what does the environment look like? Otherwise, you know, if it's not close enough to production, uh, your results might be meaningless. And, and it just, you know, those short agile delivery sprints and these lengthy, rigid performance tests just didn't fit, uh, didn't fit well. And, you know, unfortunately, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how do we compact the same level and type of testing we were doing into something that could fit into the sprint where we could actually maintain it and have it ready to go. Um, and But once we figured out that wasn't the right problem to solve and, and started to break down things into, in more at a component level, that's where we actually started to, to make some progress. But but yeah, it was almost embarrassing to think about that, you know, how long we tried to, to, to solve that problem without realizing, hmm, this, this really isn't what we're supposed to be doing. So if you had to go into a brand new client tomorrow and they're saying, we want continuous performance testing here, what, what's the first questions you're going to ask them? Um, questions around figuring out if they're ready um, and they really understand what that means. Because my, my, my experience is that either they've, they've done some system level performance testing in, in the past and they just want to, to try to do that more often and, and earlier in the delivery cycle, or... Um, they're using the functional testing analogy. Oh, we're just going to hook some tests up to our pipeline and they're going to magically execute and give us the results we need, uh, you know, every time we deploy to integration environment or, or, you know, whatever stage of the pipeline we're at. So it's, it's kind of understanding their expectations and then uh, educating them uh, a lot of times covertly on, uh, on what it, you know, what it really means to be ready. And, and what actual continuous performance testing really is, because that's another thing I want to kind of highlight in your presentation here, and I'll bring this up. You talk about how to know what continuous performance testing is for, by what it's not, right? So let's look at that here. Uh, you talk about it's not just running more frequent traditional performance tests, which I think is probably the first mistake people will make. We'll just run them more often. But what are some of these other things that you run into? Um, well, I, you know, I talk about what it's not because that's where we spend a lot of our time, right? We figuring out that this isn't working, these, these big bang level um, uh, performance tests. Um, we tried to uh, you know, just reduce the scope, run it more frequently, but we weren't really getting um, uh, the information that we needed. Uh, it wasn't just completely automating, right? Most tools today, you can, you can certainly run uh, through some type of CI CD pipeline, but it's, that's not enough, right? It's, it's, what are you actually trying to find out, um, at each stage of the pipeline? And, uh, you know, I, I would, um, I would say it's, it's less important to be perfect, right? Cause we, a lot of what we found was perfect was, was being the enemy of good enough for us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, just you know, what can I learn about at the component level? Um, even at the unit level, maybe, um, in terms of performance and, you know, get that focus off absolute response times and absolute metrics, because we're not in anything like a production environment, probably. Um, but what is important is the trend, right? Um, and is, is the trend going the right way or the wrong way, or at least staying stable? And that's, that's kind of um, the, the, the consistent thread of what we found was let's get some results. Let's start trending them over time. We'll figure out which ones are important, which ones aren't. Um, uh, same with the scope, right? We constantly adjust the scope, uh, over time. And I think if you take that DevOps kind of continuous improvement approach, right? Don't, you're not going to get it right the first time. Let's start somewhere and let's figure out how to improve. Um, that's, that's when we started, you know, turning that flywheel and, and gaining momentum. You know, one of the things also that I remember learning from you early on, just a couple of years ago, you, you started talking about this, about, 
requirements, performance requirements, or what we I now refer to as operational requirements. Some people call them non-functional requirements. It makes me pull my hair out. But me those too. little sticky notes where people are putting the you know things that they want as a user, I want blah, 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 but they never put those other operational requirements on there. And like you and I are saying, just maybe if you have extra room on the back, also add, it needs to come back within this amount of time under this amount of load or this amount of resiliency. That's, that's really important, right? Absolutely. And that was probably the biggest hole that we found, again, likely because it was always someone else's problem. They weren't thinking about it early on. Um, and, and along those lines, one of the biggest lessons learned that we had was um, we would try to get just the perfect requirement, whether it was a, you know, a exact target throughput or concurrency or acceptance criteria around response times or you know, other, other maybe capacity requirements. Um, but the organization didn't have that information that early in the process. So when we actually, what we did was instead of calling them requirements, we started calling them factors. Like someone has some idea somewhere about something, right? What the throughput might be about what concurrency might be about what the response times might need to be. Let's just get that out there and start thinking about it. Um, and, and that, that was kind of the, the, uh, where the dam broke for us. And we started actually uh, making some momentum there as well and getting information we could um, uh, start to use. Well, I know that you, you also talk about uh, the various stages that we're, you're talking about getting feedback through other various stages. And I wish we had time to cover all of those, but I know this is something that your company actually does. Can you talk a little bit about if somebody what were interested and they wanted to engage you in helping them uh, start continuous performance in their software lifecycle? How can they reach you and, and reach Forte? Sure. Uh, so I'm available, uh, you know, lead.barnes at fortegroupgrp.com um, on LinkedIn and, uh, and Twitter as well. Uh, always happy to talk, uh, to talk to people about this, uh, you know, very interesting. And it's, you know, we've been doing performance testing for, like you said, decades, right? But this is relatively new. Every, every, engagement we do, we learn something and we learn it along with the client and, you know, we're, um, we get them to the place they need to be and, and, you know, that take those lessons learned and roll them into the next one. Awesome. Thanks for being on the show today, Lee. Appreciate it. Thanks, Scott. Always good talking with Lee. What do you think? Are you ready for continuous performance? I'd like to hear your feedback about this. You can reach me online on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media. Scan that QR code and it'll take you to all of the links where my bio is featured and how to reach me. You can also email me directly at heyscott at smcjournal.com. Be great if you could give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Maybe scan that QR code, which will take you directly to the main page where you can become a subscriber. That helps us a lot. I really, really do appreciate all the subscribers to our channel. Until next time, this is Scott Moore thanking you once again for joining me for the SMC Journal podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.